What's going on everybody? Curtis Wilkerson with hogsports.com coming to you live from the Key Bank Center here in Buffalo, New York, where they're turning the basketball court back over to a hockey rink, but not before the Arkansas Razorbacks outlasted New Mexico State 53 to 48 to advance to the Sweet 16. Oh buddy, incredible. You know, Eric Musselman has had two opportunities in his three seasons to take Arkansas to the NCAA tournament. COVID canceled that the first year. But he's taken advantage of the two chances that he's had and gotten the Razorbacks to the Sweet 16 both years. Folks, that hasn't happened since the Nolan Richardson era when they did it four times in a row from 1993 to 96. I have a pretty good hunch that Eric Molson is a guy that could match or surpass that streak. What he's doing with this Razorback program is absolutely incredible. And you know, some will try to discount it a little bit and say, well, Arkansas beat a 13 seed and a 12 seed to get to this point. Arkansas can't control who it plays. It can control how it plays them. And it doesn't have to be pretty, but at the end of the day, this is all about win or go home, survive and advance. And that's exactly what the Razorbacks did. Nothing, nothing can be taken for granted on this stage. It's so hard to make the NCAA tournament. And once you get here, Musselman says this all the time, it's so hard to continue to win games. The amount of pressure, the level of scrutiny that it's involved. That's why this tournament is so special. That's why they call it March Madness, because some of the things we've seen have happened. I've seen some people say they're disappointed in the way the Razorbacks played. Are you? Stop it, if you are. Ask Kentucky, or Alabama, or LSU, or Tennessee how they feel. I guarantee you they would take an ugly win at this point, but instead they're back home waiting on next year. Absolutely incredible. You know, were there bumps? Of course. Was it ugly? You bet your ass it was. But that's all right, because the Razorbacks found a way to win. This team is so resilient, so gritty, so tough. There's no give up in this group. And they continue to prove it time and time again. I, I joke around a little bit with some of the people that I work with and, and I say, Arkansas might be the worst, best team I've ever seen because they're a flawed group. And I mean that in the nicest way possible because this team does things at times that's just maddening. Makes you pull your hair out. Some of the turnovers, uh, the, the offensive lapses that, that they go through, sometimes the, the droughts. They had one tonight, Arkansas didn't score for over eight minutes. And you felt like if they just had a little bit going offensively, they really could have stretched that thing out. But that's just the way this group plays. But at the end of the day, when they need to close, they close and they do it strong. And that's why they're one of 16 teams left in the country that's still playing basketball. Unbelievable. Arkansas, Arkansas shot 27.5% from the field. They made 14 shots, 14 field goals, and won the game. How? Well, what's the DNA of this team? It's defense and it's getting to the free throw line. And that's exactly what won Arkansas this game tonight. Arkansas makes 14 shots from the field, but they make 22 free throws on the night. That's how you overcome poor shooting performance, by getting to the free throw line, being focused and knocking them down. Defensively, I mean, Arkansas clamped down, absolutely clamped down. First of all, I wrote a piece yesterday titled, Can Arkansas Cool Red Hot Teddy Allen? the New Mexico State player who scored 37 on UConn on Thursday. Well, not only did they cool him, Aldis Tony poured a bucket of ice water over his head, clamped him up, had him in the gulag the entire night. Just an inspired defensive performance by Tony. Limited Allen to 12 points on five of 16 shooting from the field. And, and some of that came late. He made him work for everything. He did not get a single easy bucket until 2.6 seconds left and he went coast to coast for a dunk. It's the only one he had. Tremendous job by Tony, and that trickled down to the rest of the team with the way they played defensively. Arkansas allowed 17 points in the first half. That's the fewest that a Razorback team has allowed in the first half of an NCAA tournament game. It goes all the way back to 1941 when the Razorbacks allowed 18 against Wyoming. Shout out to Mike Kaywood for that stat. That was an incredible defensive performance and Arkansas needed every bit of it on a night where the shots weren't necessarily falling for him. 
you know, the Hogs got up 13 there. Uh, Devo fouled the three-point shooter. New Mexico State gets a four-point play right before halftime to cut it to nine. You kind of knew that was a little bit of a momentum swing. The Aggies came roaring back. They took a lead on Arkansas. They were pounding the ball inside, having some success in there. Uh, the Razorbacks were all out of sorts offensively. Like I said, they had a stretch of over eight minutes uh, where they didn't score. But the key run of the game came when J.D. Note heads to the bench in foul trouble. He's got four fouls, which, by the way, he fouled out, and four of those were charge calls. Interesting. At any rate, he goes to the bench with four fouls. Arkansas needs somebody to get something going. Shot clock's running down. Stanley Amude sticks a three. Devo Davis comes up with a steal. He finds Audis Tony in transition for a dunk. All of a sudden, Arkansas goes from reeling. They had lost the momentum of the building. It was starting to get pretty pro New Mexico State in there. But that run pushed the lead back out to 41 to 33. And it gave Arkansas a, a, a deep breath, a little bit of separation. Uh, and and it, was, it was the answer. You got punched, you punch back. And that's what this team does. And the Aggies punch back again. They didn't go away. They claw back, they cut it to two down the stretch but Arkansas was absolutely nails at the free throw line. I can't wait to do these player grades because they're going to be all over the place. You know, looking at the stats here, J.D. Note, he goes 5 of 18 from the field. That's not good. He has six turnovers. That's not good. But he led the team with 15, or excuse me, 18 points. He had eight steals, eight steals in a game for J.D. Note. That's incredible. Really nice work. Jalen Williams, you know, he had some struggles in the second half defending McCants. He had a couple threes. He blew by him one time for a dunk, scored on him inside. Uh, but he rallied and was strong down the stretch. But he had 10 points. Most importantly, he absolutely controlled the glass for Arkansas. 15 rebounds for Jalen Williams. That's winning stuff, finding a way to impact the game in a winning fashion. Stanley Amude, only 3 of 10 from the field, but he hit that huge three that we talked about, he had three big assists, some really nice assists in the first half when Arkansas started to get into a little bit more of a rhythm offensively. And then he pulled down eight big rebounds. That's good, that's a good number for Stan. Devo only had two points, but he played some vintage, vintage Devo Davis defense. Looked like he did when he led Arkansas to the Sweet 16 when they beat Texas Tech. It was that kind of defensive performance for Devo. Much, much better than some of what we've seen over the course of the year. You knew he had it in him and he showed it tonight impacting the game without scoring. Also had some really nice passes mixed in there. Chris Likes, stop the slander, folks. Look, what did he play? Eight minutes, nine minutes on the night? That's not a lot, but you have to consider the impact that he's made. Has this season gone the way he planned for it too, for the, that the Razorbacks planned for him to have one? No, of course not, it hasn't. But he came to Arkansas for this reason to compete on this stage. And in the limited role, he goes up and he goes seven of seven from the free throw line. He got fouled on a three-pointer, knocked down all three. And then again, Note fouls out with a minute 22 left. Chris Likes checks in and, and what do they need? They need their automatic press breaker guy who hasn't played the entire second half. He's coming in there cold. He's not in the floor, the rhythm of the game, but he gets open on the press. He takes care of the ball. He gets fouled. He goes four of four from the free throw line in the final 10 seconds. That's why Arkansas wins the game. They wouldn't have won the game without the contributions of Chris Likes. Excellent. Excellent stuff. I mean, what a special night that this was. What a special team that this is. We're fortunate. I'm fortunate as someone who covers the Razorbacks to get to follow this team around and experience this. You're fortunate to be able to watch it. Razorback fans, this is what you've been waiting for, for this program to get back to where it was in the mid-90s because we all knew with the tra tradition, the history of Arkansas basketball, that this should be the standard every year doing exactly what this Razorback team has done. Eric Musselman is the king of Arkansas right now. He's got a hell of an army of Razorbacks. Great coaching staff. What Keith Smart and Gus Arginal have done by being added to this coaching staff, it's been incredible. The players, the fan base, this is why you love college sports. This is why you're a Razorback fan. This has just been incredible. It's so much fun to be able to share in it and tell the stories. Unbelievable. And, and before I wrap up, 
you know, this experience here in Buffalo, I didn't know what to expect coming over here. I had no idea. I just knew I was going from Tampa to Buffalo and then hopefully somewhere else after that. It's been really cool. The Key Bank Center has been awesome. Everybody is curious about the Buffalo wing ratings. Listen, I'm a connoisseur of wings. Bar Bill, fantastic, fantastic wings. The Anchor Bar, notch below. We went to another place called Sidelines down here that was really good. So if you get an opportunity, go check it out. If you're in town for whatever reason, those are three pretty good spots. Enjoyed those. Uh, look, what's up next? The Sweet 16 for the Razorbacks against number one overall seed Gonzaga. I'll tell you this right now, Arkansas matches up pretty well. Gonzaga's had some struggles. They struggled with Georgia State in the opener. They struggled mightily with Memphis tonight. They're getting ready to play the best team they've seen in a long time. Arkansas has a real shot here. It's gonna be in San Francisco on Thursday, so the Razorbacks are gonna to have to overcome some things. They're gonna to have to travel from the East Coast over to the West Coast, three time zones different. So they need to recover, get rid of the jet lag, get focused up for Chet Holmgren, Drew Timmy, and the Gonzaga Bulldogs. It's gonna be fantastic. I can't wait to get down there and share the experience with you guys. It's been Curtis Wilkerson with Hog Sports. I'll see you in Cali.